Alhamdulillah that the holy month of Safar, the month of the oceans of eternity and hayat, the cave of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the leaving of, of dunya and the satanic kingdom and running to the heavenly kingdom. And as a result of running into that heart Allah dressing with knowledge and wisdom for resides all knowledge and all wisdom emanating from the reality of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah that Allah gave to us this tariqah, this path and this way towards the immensities of, of its marifah of Gnosticism and its realities. And we pray that Allah to dress us and bless us and grant us to see the lights of Mawlid the Nabi and the opening of that light and that reality, the prophetic light that opens within the heart of believers and is their najat and their salvation. And alhamdulillah that in the next few days I believe Safar ending and or four, five, six days and Mawlid the Nabi Rabbi al awwal opening. We pray that Allah to give us a life in which to see those days and nights and to be blessed by its eternal reality. We talked last night about the Surat Al-Kahf and the reality of Sayyidina Khidr and, and the interaction with Sayyidina Musa And we only touched on the reality of, of social pressure and not able to endure our path based on social pressure. That the guidance coming in for our time now from Surat Al-Kahf as Surat Al-Kahf is guiding the earth, Holy Qur'an is guiding the earth. And Surat Al-Kahf's guidance for us is that social pressure is difficult and the immensity of that social pressure and following your path. If Sayyidina Musa is Kalimullah one whom speaks to Allah is so affected by what people would think and the path it gives for us an opportunity to understand our own personal dilemma and the, the danger that shaitan is playing with, with social media that, how can I follow and the social pressure that, oh you're going to be like them, oh you look like them, oh you're going to have to wear like a turban like them. And every type of social pressure that comes to distract the believer from their path and that's the danger that everyone is facing now. And we talked about the realities and understanding now the realities of manifestation and the power that Allah gave to us that we are unaware of. And we don't really know and the majority of people don't really know the danger of the power that Allah has given to them in the hands of shaitan. Because shaitan knows the gift that Allah has given, وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْنَ بَنِي آدَمْ That's why he fell from grace because he wasn't chosen for it. So he knows exactly the gift and he wants to use their gift to entice them towards punishment. <clears throat> so in the reality of manifestation when people are creating their alter ego, giving their alter ego a force, a life, they're bringing and resurrecting that horrific creature. And as a result of giving that creature any type of credibility because the tariqah is based on mawt qabl and mawt is to kill that creature. The name I have and the identity I have growing up my whole life was to bury it, to read it, put it into the ground, read Surat Al-Fatiha for it and not to resurrect it, not to resurrect the bad identity. But all that shaitan has done and is doing 
is that every bad desire and every incorrect understanding he makes them to bring out. So with social media they make these profiles, they put images of themselves, they bring out all of their desires. So that is a reality that's happening. So every everything that you bring out of that bad character actually is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger as a result of the strength of that bad character it will pull the servant down. So that's something that we have to sort of meditate and contemplate about. People whom are posting these identities of themselves and you see somebody who was moderately believing and tries to for example, we'll use just an example. They tried so hard to have moderate belief, they go and they make a profile. As soon as they have a profile they entice by shaitan for likes and as a result of the enticement for likes and an attention and recognition because that's the danger of the nafs and especially the, in the levels of the nafs when we talk about the danger of, of why people have anger at certain levels of the tariqah because they feel that they're due a certain respect. They want the shaykh to call them, they want everything to bow to them and to be recognized and this is a danger of the self but shaitan's well aware of that. So in this example of somebody thinks they're moderately coming into Islam that they have things to share for people, as soon as they enter into the playground of shaitan he entices them to get likes, to build your account with friends, with not even your friends, you don't even know any of these people. And as a result, as a result to, to move towards the likes you see these people their profiles changing. Oh maybe it's not so popular they start to take their kufi off. Then they begin to look like hipster imams, long hair and beads around their neck and, and all sorts of looks and appearances. And they left, they left the example and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad They left the look of modesty and the sunnah and the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and they became a hipster. Somebody from the streets, somebody trying to look like they're you know from amongst the people and they think, oh it's not a big deal, don't worry about it shaykh. But what happens is that identity that you gave power to, it will pull faith from you because you're not getting anything from it, you're feeding your demon. And a result of feeding that demon it will pull your faith away until later you hear one day that that person is not really even praying anymore, not even doing any of those things anymore because that creature they created took them down. Then look at some of the influencers of female influencers who are covered and all of a sudden say, well we want to put out a profile on makeup and how to do this and how to be fashionable. And as soon as they do that and they build an audience and build an audience and build an audience that demon that you're making all of a sudden decides that no longer going to cover and no longer going to represent the Islamic identity and that demon took down that person who had faith and 10,000 people or 5,000 people that are being influenced by them because he uses the term influencer. So they were influencing people, that's how big the game is with shaitan. They didn't only take the one person down who was moderate in their belief, trying and struggling in the way of Allah They thought, oh for money and likes I'll just you know take everything and change my whole appearance. But the 10,000 people who are looking to you for a sense of understanding or, or following and thought it, thought it was something nice, they were taken down. So then the danger of what's happening and how we are now manifesting our worst identity. And that manifestation will have its own power that comes back to attack the believer and back to attack that insan and that's exactly what shaitan knows. And alhamdulillah that Allah guide only Allah that they know what shaitan is doing. And that's why their advice and their teachings are, don't do that, don't enter into that arena.
don't create those profiles and, and, and don't get involved with that sickness as the danger of it will pull the person down. And this is a, a reminder for myself from the secrets of manifestation. These are a subject that I don't think anyone is touching. And the ability of insan and, and basically anyone with a red tablecloth on their head on a YouTube channel, change it. Don't look at it, don't listen to it. Anyone wearing a kifa that look like an Italian restaurant, change the channel that don't listen to the Wahhabi teachings. Don't listen to a, a moment of their advice and two words from their mouth because there's going to be an energy and negativity from them and they take away the faith and the azimat of Allah because they make everything to be no, there's no like this, there's no power like this, there's no power for the soul, there's no movement of the soul. These realities that are flowing from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad they have a, and require a faith, they require a purity of faith. And if we contaminate our heart by listening to Hizb shaitan and the people who have absolutely no faith then the danger is it puts a doubt, they shoot the arrows of shak and doubt. They shoot arrows of doubt into the heart so that the person is listening and thinking, oh what, what is, is like that, is like that and that's a, a danger. This way is based on such a high level of faith that when we have that ocean of reality we listen to it, we go into it and begin to open the heart towards its understanding. The power of manifestation which Allah has given to insan is immensely powerful. What they think they can conjure up, what they draw, what they produce and what they make in movies, Allah make it to come into existence based on what they have put out. And as a result shaitan inspires them because they, they understood and they were taught this in seclusions. That when they go into seclusion whatever their mind knows shaitan will use that mind and its images to attack them. So somebody who lives a life that hasn't seen, hasn't been involved in anything, when they go into their seclusion what's the scariest thing that their mind can conjure for them to come and attack them? A mouse, a rat, maybe an old time picture of a dragon and that was the danger because that servant their mind and heart was clean, they didn't expose themselves to these manifestations. And then shaitan can't can't affect them and attack them to the degree, the degree that he wants. But when he knows the ability that Allah gave to the servant, he inspires them to make all of these horrific images, horrific movies, horrific creatures within these movies. As a result of that servant trying to go in seclusion or everyone will do a seclusion in the grave, the shaitan will come and bring the images that the person was aware of. So when they're being attacked by these negative energies it will be every demonic force that they ever encountered with their eyes, shaitan will make those demons to appear and begin to attack the servant. And that's, that's what his goal is, that's what he wants is to destroy insan. He's not happy that he didn't receive the khalifa. So his whole goal is the destruction of people and humanity and, and, and creation. When we understand that game that he's doing then alhamdulillah we're at least involved in this arena of, of battle and that the believer is to purify their heart and visualize the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Rosa Sharif and to go towards the oceans of rahmah and love and mercy so that the Divine Light can dress them and bless them. As a result of that blessing it can subdue all the negativities because if your overwhelming ability is positive and of a Divinely loving nature that positivity can outdo the negativity and subdue all the bad characteristics. But imagine what he's doing to all these 99% of the population in which they're seeing all these negativities 
and then they go into the grave with all those images and all those difficulties and that's all that shaitan wants. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with, with the lights of guidance and the realities that Allah want to, to open within the heart of, of insan and especially those whom are lovers of the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah Subhana wa bika Rabbil Izzat amma yasifoon Assalamu ala al-Mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha